So we know that you guys are in a different situation than normal, that life looks a little different than it did last year come August or September. And one of the things that we know is that sometimes when things change, it creates a lot of stress. And when we're stressed, sometimes our communication isn't the best. But the other reality is that communication isn't always something that comes naturally. Sometimes we have to learn how to communicate. We have to learn skills that make communication easier. So what we've done is we've put together a little video here for you on tips for how to communicate more appropriately with your family, your friends, and how to deal with conflict when it comes up, because it's going to come up. So we hope you enjoy and we hope you find this helpful. Hello again. I'm here to talk about something that we might be dealing with on a daily basis, which is conflict. I'm going to teach a few steps on how to resolve conflict through conflict resolution. So first is acknowledging that there is something wrong, that there is a problem and a conflict between you and another individual, and allowing the space to talk about it. Second, setting some ground rules, putting some boundaries down to res like respecting each other, no interruptions while talking. Third, allow yourself to listen. Fourth, allow yourself to be heard. Five, problem solve with the person, come to an agreement or a compromise. And six, always be kind to yourself and know that conflict is not always a bad thing. Confronting conflict with an open mind and a respectful manner and willingness to work it out can lead to results. I want to talk with you briefly about active listening. Right now we're stuck at home and we're communicating with people more frequently than we might be used to. So one way to improve our communication and to help us is by active listening. And the way you know you're listening actively is by not thinking of a response while someone's talking to you. Also to be able to repeat back to them what they tell you. A bonus is to be able to ask questions about whatever the person's telling you. So an example of that would be, oh, I hear that you say that you want me to clean up my room every day after my online classes. Okay, um, is it okay if I do it after I take a break? Active listening. Hi everyone, I'd like to share a story about being human. Two boats collide. One oarsman yells at the other for the accident, but finds that the boat is empty. The oarsman's angry. Not only did his boat crash, now he has no one to blame. Does this sound familiar? Makes sense. We have a hard time accepting what we can't control and use blame to feel safe and protect our emotions. No one likes getting in trouble. Blaming can distract from solutions. How can we avoid blame, you ask? I'll share some tips. Recognizing the use of blame is a great self-awareness tool. It gives us an opportunity to examine and reflect on what we're afraid of, avoiding, or resisting. Consider using empathy over judgment. Practice is progress, not perfection. Be kind to yourself. Set rules for positive and productive conversations. No accusatory or negative language allowed. Determine what the problem is, not who the problem is. Thanks for listening. If you crash, notice it, be with it, reflect on it, and find out what you need from it. And then keep rowing. You're not going to reach your destination spending all of your time yelling at an empty boat. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about fighting fair. It's totally normal to not get along with someone or disagree, but here's some tips on how to fight fair. I'm gonna use the word calm, because that's easy enough, right? So C, I want you to check in with yourself and see how you're really feeling. You're gonna to try to keep calm language and keep your body calm. A, is you're gonna always wanna use appropriate language because no one responds to inappropriate language. L, you're gonna listen. So when it's not your turn to talk, it's the other person's, you're gonna to listen to what they have to say. And M, you're gonna monitor the time that you're giving to have this argument or discussion. You don't wanna keep going and, and have things go on and on, so you're gonna set a certain time limit and stay within that. Happy, healthy arguing. Hi guys, this is Ms. Stella, and I wanted to give you some tips on how to get your emotional needs met. When we don't get our emotional needs met at times, sometimes we can feel a wide array of emotions such as anger, sadness, frustration, and it cannot feel very good. Ways that we can get our needs met is by expressing it. We can express it to our parents, for example. Mom, I feel lonely. I really would like to spend time with you. Or with your friends. I haven't seen you in a while, let's hang out, let's kick it, okay? So this can help, this can help relieve some of the frustration or feelings that you may have inside. And you'd be surprised on the difference that it can make. Well, that's my tip for today. I look forward to talking to you guys and I 
Hope you enjoy this. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hi, this is Adina Silva, mental health therapist. Just wanted to share a quick tip on using I statements. An I statement is a way to speak to someone and communicate your feelings while also giving a description of like a problem or something that you might be facing. Sometimes when we communicate with others, we um, start with saying like you always or you never, like you never share with me or you always blame me for something. And sometimes that's not really what we're trying to communicate, but it's hard to think about that. So a really great way to communicate is using I statements where you will say, I feel happy when you play video games with me because I know you care. Or I feel sad when you don't respond to my text message because I don't know where you're at. Something really simple, but very effective uh, and it takes some practice. So I hope this works and I can't wait to hear um, how it's going for you.